everyone, it's Tana. Welcome back to the channel and another video for Scrappy Tales Crafts. Today I'm working with the Popping Poppies stamp set. I'm excited to get to use this because I knew what I wanted to do for a while, at least color-wise. I, I knew I wasn't going to color them in the traditional sense. So here we're going to do some ink smushing. And I'm using Distress Oxides and I'll have all the colors up on the screen for you. I really added a lot of reds to these pieces of cardstock. Um, it's Arches 140 pound watercolor cardstock because I was trying to find the perfect color for my poppies. I think on this panel, I when I added the crackle, Crackling Campfire, the new one, I got really scared because when it was wet, it looked extremely orangey, like orangey, orangey but it dried back and I like what it added to the cards. I also left some white spots because that adds some interest as well. Um, don't worry, we're almost done with the ink smushing. I cut a lot of it out. I have to say you guys, I think I ink smushed for over an hour between these three panels and the green panels I did and I had some extras in there as well. So I really cut down that time for you guys. I dried the panels in between each color as well, just so you know that, in between each layer. So there are my red panels. Now I'm just going to show you some really quick ink smushing for the green. And I stamped out a lot of images, a lot. Like I have more to work with if I want to make some more cards with this stamp set. I stamped them all out with, I believe it was Versifying. Claire Nocturne ink, uh, but we'll see in a moment. And I heat embossed them also, so they had a raised edge because I also painstakingly fussy cut all of them out. I'm not a dye person. Very rarely will you see me use dyes because I don't like the border that they leave around images, for the most part. I have gotten a little better with using dyes once in a great while. So you'll notice that that smaller poppy, when I stamp it out, I mostly leave the stem off of the image. I leave a little tiny bit of the stem and that's it because I'm going to attach green stems later. Uh, otherwise it was just leaves and those weren't really attached to anything but the heart image. And I did stamp out one full heart image on the red panel because I'm going to use that on our second project. Other than that, it was all separate leaves and flowers. So I did end up stamping a couple of green poppies, just in case I wanted them, the larger ones. I do have a smaller green poppy we're gonna use for the first card. And, but I, I stamped a lot of poppies out in green, the regular size poppies. I don't know if I'll end up using them or not, but I thought they were interesting. So there are all the pieces that I painstakingly cut out. So now I'm adding the leaves to the full-sized heart and I'm using my Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive. And then I'm adding my green stems onto my little red poppies. Now this poppy was the only one that has a full stem on it. And as soon as I saw it, I knew kind of what I wanted to do with it. So I'm gonna use the Catherine Pooler's Fiesta Blue Ink and I believe Garden Party for the green. And I'm not ink blending all the way across my panel. I'm just doing one small strip across the top, one small strip across the bottom for the grass, I did not want them to meet in the middle, and I did that on purpose. I think it gives it a different look, and it is actually the first time I've done it. So we'll see, maybe I'll use it more often. So now I'm gonna line up six or seven of these red poppies across the bottom of my slimline card. I finished card size for this slimline will be four by eight and a half. But this panel I believe is three and three quarters by eight and a quarter. And then I'm going to pop a green poppy up in the center of all of those beautiful red guys. And I think that really looks cute. I love the way this card turned out. It's simple, but it's cute. So I'm going to use for my sentiment, you make life pop. So you make life, I stamped out with the Versifying Claire Nocturne ink. And then I stamped out pop in Concord and Ninth's uh, Clover ink and then heat embossed it with clear embossing powder. And I am now using a piece of Concord and Ninth Clover 
cardstock to put as a mat behind my front panel. And that's it for the first card. Now we're going to do something a little different. So I took this guy right here, this heart, and I'm making treat bags for Riley for Valentine's Day for her class and all of her teachers. So I thought I'd make a special one for her second grade teacher. So right now I'm tracing all the inside parts of the heart so I know where to cut because we're going to make it a shaker bag. And watch, be real careful with your craft knives, guys. I almost poked myself with that thing. That would have been bad. So here is the final cutout image. As you can see, I, I slid my wooden coaster in there to cut on so I wouldn't cut through the bag. And now I'm cleaning off my acetate with some hand sanitizer. Uh, by the way, if you do that, you use hand sanitizer to clean up your acetate or anything else. Make sure it doesn't have anything in it, like no aloe, anything like that. It tends to leave a cloudy residue behind. So now I've it just traced around my heart and get, gotten the rough shape. And I'm using some uh, art glitter glue to glue that to the inside of my bag. But I have a piece of regular cardstock in there, 60 pound, to make sure that the glue doesn't stick to the back part of my bag. Now I'm gluing the heart image onto the front. And this piece here, this is its size, five and an eighth by four. That's big enough to cover the heart image and leave a little bit extra to add some shaker bits in there. Now, I do wish I would have been a little bit more lenient, like, you're not lenient, like maybe a little bit more reserved with my shaker bits. This container here has all my shaker bits, sequins and stuff like that that I've gotten from AC Moore and Michaels and Joann's and I keep them all in there. I also added some clear seed beads and some Nouveau cloud circles in there. So, yeah. It was a little hard to glue that sucker closed. It did work. I did have to put something heavy on it. But now you can see, because these were some cheap bags I bought off of Amazon last year for Valentine's Day, and it was a lot, like 100 bags. But you can see now that piece of cardstock that I used to keep the shaker contents in. So we're going to get rid of that image by cutting out a frame with some dies from our stash. And I'm just going to glue that right over the top part of my bag where you can see the edge of the cardstock. And that's it, guys. I hope you like both projects for this video. I am going to try to squeeze out one more this month with another item that I want to use for Valentine's Day. So we'll see you in that video. Bye-bye for now, guys.